all the time. And it's it's one of the few guys also with the name of Fred. See, Red, Fred, join us. Hey, what's going oh, on, Fred? Guys, guys, you're making radio magic. I love it. <laughs> hey, Nick, I asked that one day when you if you have a son, think about Fred as an option for a name. Because <laughs> Fred it's and I are trying name. to start a move. Yeah, we're starting to get the name back in vogue. Well, yeah, we're trying hey. to spread the name around. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost trap night, guys, and I can barely contain myself. I'm so excited. Exciting. The final piece is almost here. I'm so sick of people calling Wendell Carter Jr. a safe pick. He shot 41% from three. He's an underrated passer, two blocks per game, solid defender. He's 19, almost a full year younger than Mo Bamba. That's not safe. That's the right pick. What say you? I agree with you, Fred. I think that Carter, assuming they don't move and things play to form up top as, as we think they – uh, they will. I think he's the guy for the Bulls. But I have a question for you because I was listening to Waddle and Sylvie a week or two ago, and you said you thought that the Bulls didn't have holes all over the roster. You had heard something I said, and you thought there there aren't holes there. I want you to oh. tell me, besides marketing, who you are sure on within this roster uh, right now in the place that they're in. I, I think it's unfair to judge Zach Levine on 27 minutes a game over 24 games, which is what he played for the Bulls. The previous two seasons, he shot 38% from three. I'm confident no one's going to give him a max deal. There's only seven teams with cap space. We're going to get him on a bargain, and he's going to be a good player. So I'm confident in him. I love Lopez as a center. And I also like Dunn. I think it's unfair. Dunn was playing at a very high level until he f fell on his face. And he never had a chance really after that against Golden State. So we got four out of five positions. We have a hole at the three. If we take Carter, he'll be a five. That means we'll have a team ready. We just need to get a three. And that three, I don't know who that's going to be. We'll figure it out. I, I'm hoping we draft Miles Bridges also. That's another option I have that I love. But let me just paint this picture for you guys real quick. Wendell Carter Jr. shooting 40% from three. And then Laurie Markkinen shooting 40% from three. Do you know what kind of runway lanes Levine's going to have and done? It's going to bring out every. I can just see it. The seventh title in 2020, seventh seed next year in the playoffs. Get on board, guys. I love you guys. You're doing a great job. I, I, I love Fred's optimism. Yeah. But, but, Fred, the only thing they <laughs> yeah, well, there are, there are a few things that concern me there uh, as far as loving Robin Lopez as a, a long-term piece. But aside from that, I will tell you that your optimism on Zach Levine is not shared throughout that building. Right well, the now. nice thing is, though, and we appreciate the call, Fred, the nice thing is, though, he said the lanes that would be open. Well, that if he's going to be driving to the basket all the time, that's fine with me because then he won't be shooting the outside jumper, which he showed us that he had he struggled making. Well, no doubt. And, and he was better, as Fred mentioned, in those last couple of years in Minnesota. The, the larger issue, uh, Freddie, for, for both you and for our pal C. Red Fred, Zach Levine's defense is still pretty bad. Yeah. And I don't know at this point how much better it can be, especially when you're still coming off an ACL injury. So I know there's some hope within, but I'm not seeing I'm not seeing that kind of optimism. He's next for